Thank you so much for joining me today on Just Praise Him Radio. I'm your host, Linda Lomax, and my job is to inspire you to a closer walk with Christ. Now here's the show. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio show. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and I have Minister Billy Williams on the show again this week. I know y'all be real excited. I got a lot of emails and a lot of comments when he was on here before. Everyone enjoyed everything he taught. I also enjoyed it. I'm learning things from him, too, and I think you'll be really amazed at some of the truths that he shares today. And I'll give his contact information at the end of the podcast. Just because you get cancer doesn't mean it's the will of God. Just because it gets you get cancer, it does not mean you have to die with cancer. The devil is a liar. See, let me tell you this, too. We don't die. They're using this kind of phraseology with COVID right now. They're saying that they died of COVID they, or they died with COVID, right? That's two, mm-hmm. that's two different types of death. Well, I contend that no one dies of COVID. That what they do is they, they die, like the word says, death is imminent because of the law of sin and trespass. We die because of sin. Mm-hmm. It's, it's in the earth. Well, the devil has tactics that he uses to destroy us through sickness and disease. I contend that people don't die of cancer, they die with cancer. But the good word report on that is, is when they leave the body, they le- they immediately step into heaven where there is no sickness. So you ask yourself, is it the will of God to heal all? The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish. You can put that on the soul. You can put that on the life. Jesus died to save the soul and the life, right? So when back you in, in, I'm sorry, I'll, wait, I'll give a testimony. Just I was going to say back in 1991, I believe it was, when my mother lived at Centerville, she got uterine cancer. And from the very beginning, she said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And I will live and declare the works of the Lord. And she witnessed everybody in MD Anderson Hospital she came into contact with. And she never got it again. They removed her uterus, of course, but it wasn't allowed to spread anywhere. And she already had signs it was spread somewhere else. It wasn't allowed to go anywhere else in her body because she never stopped saying that. Amen. Well, see, and let me teach you on that since, since you brought that in. You know, God doesn't give us cancer. God doesn't give us any sickness or disease because you need to realize that God cannot give you what he does not have. No. God said, I am the God that healeth thee. So if you want to know, is it the will of God to heal all? Well, he said, I'm the God that healeth thee. Now, if you read that word, and you accept the word as it's written, then you have to understand that God is talking to you, not to somebody down the street that's never opened the Bible. <laughs> the Bible says that, and we talked about it in Mark eleven twenty three and 24, it says that whosoever will pray and believe and say and speak to the mountain, whosoever, it says, it says in, uh, let me, I got it tagged right here. It talks about, uh, Oh, Lord, I lost it. I'm sorry. Well, anyway, okay. uh, we, we'll just keep rolling with it. The Bible says that with God, all things are possible. Mm-hmm. All things, all things. You can't disqualify it. If you can name it, it's a part of the all. A whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. If you heard it, you're now in whosoever, so you cannot disqualify yourself. You have to qualify yourself according to the word because the word is true and the devil is a liar. So when you're in the in the situations, like Miss Glenda just said about her mom, you have to realize that Satan is walking about the earth as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So when you're in a situation, just because you're a Christian does not mean you're immune to the assault of the enemy. It just means will you sell out to the devil's report of thou shalt die because of cancer or whatever your particular situation is. Well, the Bible says that who, whose report will you believe? The report, I would choose to re- believe the report of the Lord. So you say, how do you activate 
the power of God to see miracles, signs, and wonders. I'm going to tell you. If you read it in the scripture, that's all you got to know. The Bible says that God will heal. We read it where it says that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Those are declarations. They're not maybe mites and could be's. It is possible not to get healed because people do not. I have had people tell me to my face. I say, may I pray for you? You're sick. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Do you believe in Jesus? Oh yeah. I believe in the Lord. See there, you can believe your way to an early grave through a sickness that has no right to be on you, especially the believers in this world. Science can heal certain sicknesses and diseases, but there is a place in the realm of sickness and disease that your body will kill itself fighting these things. It'll wear itself out if it does not get the disease and the sickness out of you. Because that tells you right there that sickness is not of God. Because the minute you scratch your arm, it immediately starts to clot, stop the blood flow, and then heal the wound. The first thing you got to do is stop the bleeding. Now let's take that on a spiritual level. If a person has no relationship with Jesus Christ, they're not going to believe anything except the symptoms and the signs of what they see. You have to realize you are a part of an army that God has given weapons to. Our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds mm -hmm. ha have, a, have a voice that tell you, uh, it ain't going to get any better, or they have no hope, they have no chance. Well, I'm going to give you a testimony of a, a situation. Now, Miss Glenda, she's in Arkansas. We're in Texas at the Gulf Coast. Well, she knows this person I'm fixing to refer to. But when I first got saved and born again, and filled with the Holy Ghost. We're going to talk on that in just a minute. Because you need the Holy Ghost to do what God is going to call you to do. You got the Holy Spirit, but you need the Holy Ghost next step. So let's talk about that, or, or this testimony. All of a sudden, I received in my spirit this draw and unction to contact my cousin. And I didn't really have any particular thing to talk to her about. I wasn't, wasn't needing anything from her, so I just kept pushing it away. And it stayed on my mind so much that I say, I got to call this number just to get this out of my head. I called my cousin, she answers the phone, and she says, I have been trying for days to get in touch with you. She said, I had no contact information, and I said, well, what's on your mind? What's in your heart? And she says, you remember David Doe? And I said, sure, I remember David Doe. I said, what's up? She said, he's in UTMB today, and he's dying. She said, he's in the final stages of AIDS. His organs and such are beginning to shut down, and they told him he's in the, in the hour part of it. He's not in days anymore. He's now transgressed two hours at this time. And she said, he called me the other day, and I hadn't seen or heard from him in years, and she said, he called me in a very... Uh, desperate mode, desperate situation. And, uh, and she said, he's got the AIDS and whatnot. She said, he, he, he talked to me about mama, which you knew her as Aunt Edith. She says, uh, your mama used to tell me about a man named Jesus. She said, I want to meet him. Is he available? Or however she said that. She said, but he said, but I'm dying and I'm afraid to die. I don't want to die. She said, and if he can help me, will he help me? And she said, she passed it off. Let me, let me reach. She reached out to me because she was even a little newer in the walk of faith at, at that level than I was. So she, she kind of reached out and God got me in contact with her and I prayed a prayer. I said, number one thing, you got to find out what the glory of God is wanting to do in a situation. And I can always tell you this. It's always first to save a soul. It's always to spare a life to save the soul. Because once they die without Jesus, there's no hope. So this man had no Jesus. He just knew a man. And he just knew that he was told he was a, could do anything that, that was needed to be done. And he wanted to know about him. So I said, Father. By the authority of heaven, by the authority of God in your word, 
by the power of God vested in me by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. I said, I curse death and I bind it in that name that he will not take this young man this day, that he will live and not die, rise and testify the, to the goodness of God. And I said, Father, save his soul above all else. I say in Jesus' name, amen. And then I give her some instructions. I said, now you need to call him now. You need to make him known that the prayer was prayed and that he will live and not die. He will rise and testify because God is in the business of bearing lives to save souls that are lost. So about three weeks later, I get this same unction in my heart. I forgot about the prayer. But about two or three weeks later, I get this strong urge to talk to Tammy again. I, I reach up, pick up the phone, I dial it in, and she come, comes at me the same way. Man, I didn't have your number, and I've been trying to call you. I said, well, tell me what's hap happening. You remember with David Doe? I said, yeah, tell me about David Doe. And uh, she says, well, I did what you said. I, I delivered the message, and I told him what you prayed. She said that he called me a couple of days later and said that, after she had delivered the word that he got thirsty and he asked the doctors and the physicians at the, at the hospital for a drink of water and they said no that's not possible you can't be thirsty because you're too far progressed into the death transition and he said but they gave him a drink of water then he turned around and called him back and said he wanted something to eat that he was hungry and he said that they said, no, that's impossible because you're too far into the transition of death. You can't be hungry. But they gave him some food. And realizing that something was different, they ran a test on him. And they came back with, you need to get out of our hospital because you don't have AIDS any longer. Oh, thank you, Lord. And that wow, happened awesome. on the same day that the prayer was delivered, spoken and delivered. And this young man, now let me tell you something, that young man is alive today, but he has yet to surrender his life to Christ. But he's on a road. He's on a journey, like your listeners, and like I was, and like you were, and we are. See, God is getting him someplace. He's just taking some bumps and bruises because he's still in a beat-up stage because what God gave him back his life was not to live, relive it in sin. It was done so that God could get him to the place where he accepts Jesus Christ, which is, I don't know if it's happened today or not, but it has not ha had not happened eight or ten months ago. But you pray for what His name is not David Doe, but David Doe is who we're talking about. God knows who he is. He knows who he is. And you know, but here's he the, he the next thing. I want to take you to another okay. place in the scripture. When Jesus gave the commission to the disciples, when he told them in Mark 16, 15 through 17 to go into the world, preach the gospel, and these signs shall follow them, the, co the command that he gave them was a preparatory command. He said, but go into Jerusalem, set up house, get you a, get you a room, stay in the hotel room or whatever, wherever you're at. He said, and you stay there till the, the, the promise comes, till the baptism of the Holy Ghost falls. And they went their way. They went into the upper room. And it says on the day of Pentecost, they were in a place gathered together with one mind and one accord. And it said the Holy Ghost come upon each and every one of them and baptize them with power and demonstration and evidence of speaking in other tongues. No one was left out. There was 120 people, men and women, and probably some children up in that room that got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then they went out and began to do the work. And if I remember right, there was 3,000 souls added to the kingdom of God that day because the ones that ran from Jesus at the cross, the ones that denied him all the way up the hill, the ones that couldn't even say they knew him in the at the at the place of his trial, Peter being the one I'm talking about, he even denied that he knew Jesus because of the fear inside of him because he had no power working in him. But when that same spirit in Jesus came in that 120, the Bible says the people around thought they was crazy because they was speaking in tongues. And Peter stood up and said, these are not drunk like you think. They are full of the Holy Ghost. This is what the prophet Joel prophesied, that God would pour his spirit out on all flesh. 
and they would speak with other tongues. He sure did. And I'm, and I'm going to challenge you. If you haven't accepted that gift, if you've baptized in the Holy Ghost, pray it out for your brothers and sisters that are listening on this podcast today. Pray it out for them that they would open up their heart and shut down their mind because the spirit and the mind are at war between one another. The mind wants to argue with the spirit and the spirit just wants to say what God has to say. So when you're doing this, I want you to realize that when you call on the name of Jesus, you're saved. I believe that sets something in motion that God is going to honor that call. He's going to write your name in a book of life that's going to never be erasable. It's, it's there for all eternity. When you, when you get baptized in the, in the water, that's a submission to the, to the faith and the belief that God has washed you and cleansed you. If it was good enough for Christ, it should be good enough for us. If Jesus said that we would speak with other tongues, don't let religion lie to you and tell you that that's not for today. I understand that there's doctrines out there that teach, well, that was for the disciples, that, that that's not for today. Well, I don't know if you've looked at the world around you or not, but the world needs the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost because people are getting furious, people are getting angrier, and the devil is rearing his head like a roaring lion trying to devour the Christians of, of the earth. And that power in you is what's going to give you that next step of ability to rise up in the face of your adversary and tell him not this day you will not steal this life because God heals blind eyes. God heals the deaf. He heals the the mute. He raises the dead if necessary. Not today, Satan. And not today. But you got to understand, Miss Linda, they have to realize that if you deny the Holy Ghost and the step that Jesus said would occur, you haven't denied yourself a place in heaven. You haven't just not denied yourself a blessing in this life, a good life, a good income, a good family. It's not that. It's just you will not have the boldness to stand up in the front of the enemies of hell when they speak at you and growl in your face and tell you to shut up and sit down. You will back up in fear because of the flesh. But when the Holy Ghost, you are filled with the Spirit of God, but there's a difference. If you find, if you study the scriptures, you'll realize when the God is talking about the Holy Spirit, that's the gentleness in him. That's the Lamb of God. When you talk about the Holy Ghost, that says something with a more forceful, yeah. uh, more empowered, more dominant, uh, revelation that God is not just a lamb in my life. He's a lion that will rip the flesh from the enemy's bones. You see, and, and, and when God gave us that gift, it came as a comforter. It comes with nine gifts that go with that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the, the word of wisdom. God will give you wisdom beyond your years. It says, it talks about the word of knowledge. He will give you insight into things. You will know things that you would not other, otherwise know. He gives you the gift of faith. He will give you the gift of, of uh, healing. Yep. I, I, I walk in this gift, and I, I've walked in all nine of them at one time or another, Miss uh, Glenda, but I assure you, I've seen God manifest in all nine at one time or another. But miracles, signs, and wonders are in your mouth. If you will decree that Jesus is the Son of God, not a religious prophet, if you will believe that all others are liars and Jesus is only the truth teller, the only truth teller, because Jesus said, let all men be liars and God be true. Anything that questions the lordship of Jesus Christ is an antichrist. Anything that says Jesus will not heal today is is speaking on behalf of the devil, and the devil is a liar. And if he can convince you not to believe it for somebody else, he will eventually convince you not to believe it for you. And here's another kicker that I've learned. 
if he causes you to compromise with the Bible on any level, if he can ever get you to doubt one word of it, you'll doubt every word of it. Mm -hmm. And if any word in this scripture becomes not true to you, if it becomes a, if it's, if that's false teaching, then what you're saying is the Bible is a false doctrine. It's a false book of lies. And if any one word of it is a lie, it's all a lie. And until you settle out, that it doesn't matter what you don't understand, what you don't, don't, what you can't see and what's written. If, if you settle out that I don't care how crazy what I read is, I'm still saying it's the voice of God penned by the hands of men. All scripture was given by the inspiration of God. Jesus did it. He said, you can do it too. And if you'll just release that anointing and just decide I'm going to pray and I'm going to say it the way God said it, then I, let God fill his word. If, if they're sick and Jesus said, pray for the sick, then get a scripture and says, God said that by his stripes you're healed, Isaiah okay. 53, 5. Are you depressed? The Bible says that, that uh, the, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. The Bible says that we were healed by his wounds. He took 30, 39 stripes on his back, 40 less one. That's 39. If you study medical science, medical science has said that every sickness, every disease on the face of this planet can be categorized in one of 39 categories. So Jesus covered every single sickness and disease that the devil can throw. And there's nothing new under the sun yesterday that, that that's here today that wasn't here yesterday. It's just all coming up in a bombardment on the en enemy's last attempt to assault and torment the body of Christ, to bring us into submission to his lies. And God, I'm talking to the people on this podcast, you are anointed to do what I'm telling you because you already believe it in your heart. Now you just got to put what you believe in your heart in your mouth. Right? Yeah, that's it. Yep, there's a miracle in your mouth. Can I, let me give you one more testimony. of uh, See, because I'm talking about people that have no use for God. You know, it's not that they have no use for him. They just don't need him. So therefore, they don't have no use for him until it gets nasty. And I, I was working in this same chemical plant I mentioned earlier. And I was sitting at the desk. A man comes in to work on overtime on our shift. He sits down. He got the weight of the world and two moons on his shoulders, right? So my co-worker asked him, he says, Brother brother uh, uh, ja John Doe, he says, What's the matter? He says, uh, didn't you get to go fishing with your buddy yesterday? He turns around in the language of the world and just begins his four-letter letter blast. He said, no, blankety, blankety, blank. He said, my friend is dead. And he, he, said, he said, what happened? He said, my friend, blankety, blankety, blank, went out and drank a, a bunch of liquor, took a big, huge bottle of pills, went up on the, the local freeway, set the cruise control at over 100 miles an hour, and went to sleep at the wheel. Broadsided an 18-wheeler, all but decapitated him, oh. destroyed his brain, destroyed his chest cavity, destroyed his, his uh, crushed his heart. His lungs were full of, fl full of fluid. He said he's right now in the hospital on a ventilator on total life support, and my wife and her family are on the way to sign the paperwork to turn off the machines. They called you a dead man. Wow. And they called me a dead man. And... So I said, well, Brother John Doe, I said, let me ask you a question. May I pray for your friend? He said, won't do any good. I said, tell me why it won't do any good. He said, because my friend's an atheist. I said, can I tell you a God's truth that you don't want to hear? But I'm going to tell you anyway. I said, if your friend is truly an atheist in his heart, and if he's laying on that bed and he's truly fixing to die when they flip the switches on the machines, I said, if they beat us to the switch before we get to the throne, I said, your friend will die and go to a hell that he'll never get out of. I said, can I pray for your friend? He said, if you think it'll work. I said, here we go. And I said, now this, you hear what I'm telling you. I said, this is to the glory of God, to the Father in heaven, to the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, by the Holy Ghost. Anything happens now happens by him and him alone. You hear me? He said, I hear you. I said, Father, now in the name of Jesus, we bind death. 
It's got a commission with a plan. And, Father, I, I decommission him and his plan. I say, Father, you said that you are not willing that any should perish. This young man, you've heard the story here. You see the brokenness, the death and destruction that's working in him. I said, Father, you're, you're talking about a lost soul here. And I say you're willing to heal him and raise him up and do a work in this life because it's the soul that we're trying to save, not the body. I said, Father, now do the work and do it quickly in Jesus' name. Amen. I got up and walked away from my desk, went to the restroom, come back five minutes later, and uh, my friend was sitting there, and he, he gets a phone call. He has about a 30-minute conversation. He turns around a few minutes later. He's white as a ghost, like ain't got an ounce of blood in his face. And uh, and I said, you okay? Look like he's going to fall out. He says, uh, Brother Will, that was, that was my wife. And I said, okay, how's she doing? He said, uh, You'll be glad to know my friend did not die. I said, well, tell me about it. What did God do? He said, what happened? He said, well, he said, when they got there, they signed all the paperwork. And they said all of his, his he was brain dead, no activities, nothing. He said, and when they turned off the ventilator and shut down the machines, he said, all of a sudden, the, the brain waves started working. And he says, I said, well, what happened? He said, well, the doctor said that was impossible. And then they, then they said it was, oh, it was an after-death reaction that happens from time to time. I said, okay, what happened? He said, well, he said uh, they, when they when they took out the ventilator, they said he started breathing. Wow. And I said, well, what happened there? He said, well, they went into through his through his uh, the pipes, and they looked in his lungs, and they said his lungs was completely healed. Perfect. They was healed. No, no sign of fluid, no blood, no damage. He said they found one spot of infection on the wall. They clipped it out while they was in there, and they come out. And I said, well, what happened? He said that well, they still said it was impossible because he was dead. <laughs> and I said, what happened? He says they took out the trach. And I said, well, what are the pipes in his throat? And I said, what happened? He said, well, when they pulled out the pipe, he sat up and started talking. Oh, come on. <laughs> and, they, and his and brain said, was ruined, so he wouldn't—he shouldn't have been able his, to talk. Well, his brain was dead. His lungs had been crushed. They were full of blood and fluids before we prayed. And I said, well, and what happened? He said, well, my wife said all the doctors in the room hit the floor. They fell down. <laughs> and I said, well, what happened? He said they arrested him and took him to jail. <laughs> So, so, but then I, let me finish that one there too, because you got to hear what I'm saying. Uh, to the, I'm talking to you viewers. When God done that, it's because there was a soul in the balance. This man's soul was destined to hell because God would not necessarily have responded to this had he been saved before. And I say that because God will allow you to hurt yourself if you will. He will allow you to do it. And he will allow you to kill yourself. And what, what's so sad is if you don't have people in your life praying for you or over you in faith, that man would have perished, I have no doubt, and his soul would have been lost forever. But in God's love, grace, mercy, and power, he was willing to show himself to that man. And then the next thing I told my friend, I said, now look, I used to pass out these little, you can't get them anymore, but it was a little quick read, How to Receive Eternal Life book written by john osteen and i carried him around and i put them in people's hands and i told him i said now you hear me clear i've already told you god was doing the work so now there we're not even debating that i said but i need a request that i need to put to you now we need to finish the work i said god spared his life to save his soul yeah. he, he, he didn't save his soul in that act what he spared was his body from dying so that he could come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I handed him that book. Yes. So I gave him that book, and I asked him, would you please put this in his hand? And he said, absolutely. I don't know if he did or not, but you know what? That man is alive today, and whether he's saved or not, I can't say he that he is, but I can say he will be because I spoke it over his life, and God's word will not return void. And, when, and that's what you have to do, too, is realize why would God have me do this? First off, it's because he loves his children. Second off, he loves the world. Jesus didn't die for his children. He only has children because he died for the world. 
See, Jesus went to the cross for the sinner. He went to save the lost. He went to die for those that hated him. He went to die for those that spit on him, pulled his beard out, hit him in the head, kicked him in the back, stuck a spear in his side, nailed the nails in his feet. He died for that people. And you have to understand that when you realize that God wants you to do things in the lives of others, it's for the sake of the covenant. Right? But you are in a place where God is pouring out. I, I tell people, it's like God almost answers thoughts. I do realize that, that that's not necessarily scriptural, so to speak, but it is scriptural because Jesus said, eat your nut. But what did he say? He said, you have not because you ask not. He said, I know what you need before you ask, but ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. And you if you want to know the care, uh, if you want to know what the miracle signs and wonders look like in your life, simply study God's care. If you see a hurting person and they need a miracle, it might be as simple as a, a sandwich. It, it, it might be as simple as feeding them. That might be the manna from heaven or the water from the rock that causes their soul to be saturated with a moment of, of love that they will say yes to your Jesus. If you'll let Jesus be the core of everything you do, then if you'll put Jesus in your actions, your actions will always multiply in their life and yours. And you can't satisfy a natural hunger with a, a spiritual word. Jesus said, yeah, it'll bring hope. But Jesus said, if you see a need and you pray for them and say, go on your way, be well and be blessed, but you do not feed the need, you have done nothing. I think it was Mother Teresa that said, some people are so hungry that the only way they can see Jesus is in a piece of bread. And I don't know how many of you listening have ever known true hunger where you are starving i have known it she wasn't kidding when she said that because when you are that hungry you cannot think about anything but food that's all you can think about the, the thoughts will not leave your mind uh, we was doing a ministry I'd, I'd i'd got on board with one that was going to the philippines and they had invited the core of supporters to come to their home and they said this is what we're having they had a bowl of spaghetti there that wouldn't feed a family of four but I'm telling you, there was 20 people in that house. And I happened, God seated me at the end of the table where that bowl was in my sight. And when I went up, I actually got just a very little bit because what was in the bowl wasn't going to feed four people full. But 20 people fixing to come to that bowl, it was going to go empty in a hurry. So I left a portion and took a little bit. But I sit there and God allowed me to watch at no time did that woman ever, the woman of the house, ever put a second filling in that bowl. People came in scoop after scoop after scoop, and 20 people filled up with leftovers on their plate and walked out full full as a tick. And I got to witness that with my own eye, yeah. and God showed, allowed me to see yeah. that. Yeah, and he fed the multitudes when they were hungry. He fed them. Amen. And always share it in the name of Jesus. It's for the name of Jesus. Well, we have to cut it off there for today, but I want to give you Minister Billy Williams' contact information for those of you who would like to email him or send him a letter. He loves to hear from you. Uh, his email address is be like in boy dot l dot Williams, all lowercase, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S, like in Sam, 071963 at gmail.com. His address, the name of his ministry is Resurrection Ministries International, P.O. Box 268, Texas City, Texas, 77592. Y'all give him a holler. If you enjoy hearing him on the show, let him know. That encourages people uh, when they're teaching the Word of God. And if they helped you in some way, please let him know. He'll appreciate that a lot. And we'll have him on the show again in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Just Praise Him Radio. You can contact me by mail at my new address, JPH Inc. Glenda Lomax, P.O. Box 60, Glencoe, Arkansas, 72539. 
or by email at jphtoday at gmail.com. JPH is not affiliated with any nonprofit organization, church, or denomination. Have you ever gone through a time in your life where suddenly it just felt like your whole life was falling apart? I call these experiences the wilderness experiences. Wilderness experiences are a time of great uncertainty and change. Uh, there are times when our faith is tried and refined. After many experiences, the Lord spoke to me to write The Wilderness Companion, which is a virtual roadmap through the desert times of your life. Find out why you've been led to the wilderness. Find out what the biggest hindrance is to receiving provision in the wilderness. Find out what the seven temptations of the wilderness are. Drastically cut the time you spend in the wilderness by learning how to partner with the Lord instead of working against Him. Every Christian needs to read The Wilderness Companion. It's by Glenda Lomax, and it's available on Amazon.com or WingsOfProphecy.com. Amazon.com, The Wilderness Companion by Glenda Lomax. Have you heard? The 2016 and 2017 messages have been published in book form. Even those who do not profess a belief in God can see something is amiss in the world around us. What is coming for our world in these last days? What does the Lord want us doing while we're waiting for His glorious reappearance? Time of Reckoning and Soon It Will Be Night each contain approximately 200 prophetic messages and visions from the throne room of God telling what is coming to America and the world in these end times. The Lord has always warned nations when they were headed for destruction. He has always warned His own people. Are we also being warned? Get your copy of Time of Reckoning and Soon It Will Be Night, available now on Amazon.com. Sidewalk Flowers Volume 1 is a collection of 58 short inspirational readings that will uplift, comfort, and encourage readers from every walk of life. Sidewalk Flowers includes inspirational tales and topics taken from the lives of everyday people who exhibited extraordinary wisdom, kindness, and courage while traveling the sidewalks of life. Get your copy of Sidewalk Flowers Volume 1 today, available in print and new audiobook. Sidewalk Flowers Volume 1 by Glenda Lomax, available on Amazon.com in print or new audiobook. There is no one on earth who has not been wronged at some time in their life. Everyone has a story to tell. Everyone has been hurt by someone. The pain you have suffered does not make you special. It is what you do with that pain that sets you apart. Life can make you bitter or it can make you better. You choose. The only difference between the two is the I 